Hello and welcome to the Loose Weight Feel Great Summit. I'm your host, Joanna Peterson, and I created the summit to share with you how a healthy lifestyle can transform your life. I'm so excited that we have with us as a guest, Rachel Gregory. Welcome, Rachel. Thanks for having me. Uh, Rachel is a board certified nutrition specialist. She is an athletic trainer and the author of the best selling book, 21 Day Ketogenic Diet Weight Loss Challenge. Did I miss anything? Nope, I think you got it. <laughs> so, Rachel, tell me a little bit more about you and how, uh, how you get into this field and how have you been helping so many people? Sure. So like you said, I'm a board certified nutritionist and I specialize in implementing a ketogenic lifestyle um, specifically for um, body recomposition and fat loss, but also um, for just the overall health benefits of this lifestyle and the mental clarity and the focus and the anti-inflammatory effects that it has. Um, and so I've been studying the ketogenic diet for the past I don't know, five years now. Um, I got into it when I was in grad school getting my master's in nutrition and exercise physiology. And I actually um, created the first uh, human clinical trial looking at the effects of a ketogenic diet in non-elite CrossFit athletes. And so that was published and that's what just brought me into this field. Um, so yeah. Wonderful. And tell me a little bit more in the audience, what does ketogenic diet mean? Sure. So a ketogenic diet is, um, so my approach to a ketogenic diet is more of a, instead of taking a one size fits all approach, I like to take more of an individualized approach to it. So that's very, like a very holistic um, individualization of a ketogenic protocol or lifestyle. Um, but in general, a ketogenic diet is a very low carbohydrate, um, moderate protein, depending on the person, and then higher fat, depending on the person diet. Um, the premise is the low carb part is the, that's the main piece of it. And so it's just, it's been around for years. It, it actually first um, came about to treat children who had epilepsy. Um, and then it evolved into a, a diet protocol that was very successful for weight loss and fat loss. Um, so that's where the popularity has come with with its upbringing over the past, I would say, year or two, it's become very popular. And then um, I like to always say that a lot of people come to the diet and the lifestyle, <clears throat> sorry, for the weight loss and the fat loss, but then they stay for everything else, which is the overall health benefits, the mental clarity and focus throughout the day, um, the energy levels, all of these uh, factors that play into following this as a lifestyle. And uh, so when you're, uh, when you're giving the, 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 your clients specifically or people that are going on the protocol, the different diets, they're all personalized, right? Yes, to a degree. So in general, you, when you first start um, a ketogenic protocol, in general, everybody, well, I pretty much start people in similar ways. And the basics are the, the lower carbohydrate approach. But like you said, it really depends where you're coming from. So if you're coming from eating a standard American diet where you're used to processed food all the time, very, very high carb, then you'll probably come in um, with a different approach versus someone who has maybe been following a paleo style for a while and they've already been pretty low carb um, for a while. And so it really just depends where you're coming into it from. And then also what your goals are in general. And um, if you're an athlete, if you're very active, or maybe you're very sedentary, all of these things play a different role in kind of formulating the diet for you and your goals. And, and what foods are specific for a ketogenic diet? So mostly, um, I like to take the approach of a very whole foods approach. Um, so I always say as eating as close to nature as possible. Um, and so the premise is really just uh, incorporating foods that first, I always start off with just a, at every meal, I'll, I'll kind of just build a plate for you with what I generally start is just a good source of high quality protein, um, whether it's meat, fish, eggs, anything like that. 
Um, then you add a non-starchy vegetable. So non-starchy being anything that grows above the ground, usually you can think of it that way. Um, usually anything that's green and leafy, like broccoli, cauliflower, spinach, um, those types of vegetables. You want to avoid the starchier vegetables, like the potatoes um, and the grains and, and all of that, because those are higher in carbs um, and higher in, in sugar. And, and then <clears throat> uh, after that, you have you'll add your healthy fat. So whether it's, you know, half an avocado or maybe um, you have some, you cooked your vegetables in, a, in butter or olive oil or avocado oil or some type of healthy fat. So that's kind of how I would always, you know, build the plate. And then it depends on, again, um, your individuality. So how much of that plate, how, how much quantity you are consuming based on your goals. So if you're an athlete, if you're looking to lose body fat, that depends, that all depends. Um, and yeah, so that's just the basics of kind of creating your plate. <clears throat> and um, how, so someone that has high cholesterol already, would it benefit them or would it be okay to get on a ketogenic diet? Yes, this question comes up a lot. And I think there's a lot of research that's coming out now that's kind of busting a lot of the myths of high cholesterol that we've been taught over the years. Um, so I'm not an expert in the cholesterol piece of it, but I do know that there's a lot of research coming out with the ketogenic diet actually um, being very beneficial to those who are um, suffering from higher cholesterol. Um, I put that in quotations because there is so much more research coming out that a lot of the, the things that we have been taught in the past um, aren't very relevant in terms of um, the truth behind them, I guess you could say. But the premise of the ketogenic diet is that it is very, very good at lowering inflammation. And inflammation is really the underlying cause of any type of heart disease or a lot of diseases that are out there that a lot of people are suffering from. Um, so I would say that that piece of it is very, very important to look at rather than just looking at the traditional uh, high cholesterol that, that we all hear of. Thank you for all that information. That was really helpful. And so, uh, so if someone has um, any kind of gallbladder issues or any kind of uh, digestive issues with the ketogenic diet um, resonate with them or? Yes. Yeah, so those who have, you know, gallbladder issues, or maybe they don't even, they've had their gallbladder rem removed, their approach would be a little bit different, not different in the sense of the foods you're eating, but um, maybe a little bit more of a slower approach to incorporating fats um, because they'll have a, a higher degree of not being able to digest the fats as well as someone who had a proper working gallbladder. Um, so it might just be introducing the intake of the fats a little bit slower and then also introducing a different, different types of fats. So those who have, from my experience, those who have um, gallbladder issues, sometimes they don't do as well with the higher saturated fats and they do more well, they do well with the monounsaturated fats. So saturated fats would be more of your butters and your um, fats that are uh, solid at room temperature. And they're not necessarily bad fats, like butter and all of those are not bad. We've been taught that saturated fats are, are bad for us, but they actually aren't um, in context. And then the monounsaturated fats would be your avocados, your olives, those types of fats. Um, and then also incorporating things like ox bile and other digestive enzymes can be very beneficial for those who suffer from um, gallbladder issues because those can help them digest the fats a little bit better. Um, and so those are just a few, a few things that I would implement if someone came to me um, suffering from that. So when someone gets on a ketogenic diet, do you have them uh, do it for 30 days, 21 days? Is there a specific time you like someone to be on it and then and then you get off? Yeah, so I kind of go through um, phases. So I have my, my book that is the 21-day ketogenic diet weight loss challenge, and that is basically an introduction to uh, ketos for someone who's never done it before and they're just learning about it. So it's basically a 21-day challenge that anybody can do something for 21 days, I believe. So it, it really gets you introduced to the the diet and the lifestyle and um, teaches you and educates you about it. And then after that, um, I kind of go into, I have actually, I have another program that just came out, which is a 12 week 
um, I call it, it's called the Simple Sustainable Keto Program. And so it's a 12 week online video program course that dives even deeper into implementing it for uh, specificity. So for individuality and um, also implementing more as a lifestyle. Um, so I like to start with the challenge and just introduce the diet. And then once you're finished with that, if you um, want to continue with it, then you are going to look towards ways to incorporate it more as a lifestyle rather than looking at as a diet. Can you also tell us a little bit more about how beneficial fat is for building your hormones? It's good for your brain. Um, and the benefits of having actually a good fat in your diet. Yeah, so um, a lot of people don't realize, but our brains are actually made up of 60 to 70 percent fat. And so if you think about that logically, like if our brains are made up of so much of this substance, then obviously it's um, something that we shouldn't be demonizing, like we have been in the, in the low fat craze and in the past. Um, so that's that's very important to realize that our brains kind of our need fat and our hormones are very reliant on fat as well. So if you have a very, very low fat intake, it can mess up your hormones. It can mess with the production of your hormones. It can mess with, again, the, in, the in, inflammation that's going on in your body. Um, so I think that that is very important to realize. And it also goes back to the ketogenic diet. The, the basis of it is that you're actually putting your body into a state of ketosis. And what this means is that the, if you have very low carbohydrate intake, your body can start to run off of something called ketones, and they're naturally produced in your body with a lower carb uh, intake. And if you are running off ketones, there's a lot of research coming out that ketones are very anti-inflammatory and a much cleaner fuel source, you could say, than running on glucose all day long, which is sugar, which is what most standard American diets are very heavy in sugar and processed food and carbohydrates. Um, so the intake of fat is very in, important and healthy fat sources is also very important too. Um, a lot of people make the mistake of when they start the ketogenic diet, they believe that they can eat a bunch of fat and um, doesn't matter what type of fat it is. Um, and that's a big mistake because there are differences between say vegetable oil and canola oil versus um, fats from nature like avocados and butter and coconut oil. Um, the vegetable oils are very highly processed and they will cause a lot of inflammation versus um, the fats that are closer to nature, which is what I always say, always think back to as close to nature as possible. So that's just a little bit of the different, 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 <laughs> Oh my gosh, I can't, I can't say that word. Differentiation between those types of fats. And can anyone get on the ketogenic diet? Um, any age, any, any condition? Yeah, so I would say, again, it, also go, it all goes back to indiv individualization. So with putting, say, a, a child on the ketogenic diet, like a very strict standard ketogenic diet, um, which entails more of a low... Uh, low carb, moderate protein, high fat approach, which is, which was actually created for treating those with epilepsy. Um, that is where a little bit of the confusion comes because a lot of people think that they have to follow a very strict uh, ketogenic diet where it's very, very low carb and lower, even lower protein. Um, where those, where the premise of that is that following the standard ketogenic diet might not be as conducive to someone who is just trying to follow the diet for a, a, a healthy lifestyle. So maybe that person doesn't have to moderate protein. Maybe they can have a little bit higher protein. They don't have to go as low carb. Um, but I would say anybody can try out the anybody can try out the uh, a ketogenic diet or lifestyle. They just have to individualize it towards their needs and their goals. And that's why you are here for because you analyze <laughs> it and you'll figure it all out. Yeah. And so uh, if someone wants to add some supplements to help them uh, through weight loss, especially, um, or juicing, is that something you recommend? So I don't generally recommend uh, juicing, um, but I do recommend, you know, incorporating 
things that will help them adhere to the diet. So if there's someone, if someone comes to me and they're used to, you know, consuming smoothies all the time, that's definitely something that we can incorporate into their uh, protocol, but it would probably be a lot less fruit and more vegetables um, and maybe implementing some different high quality uh, protein powders. So maybe some high quality collagen powder um, or different types of protein powders in that sense. Um, and then with vegetable intake, I generally always recommend consuming it in its whole form um, as close to nature as possible. Uh, so you get the fiber benefits to that as well. Um, and then in terms of supplementation, some of the supplements that are uh, popular with the ketogenic protocol are things like MCT oil and MCT powder. Um, MCT oil is basically just a more concentrated form of coconut oil. Um, and it, the, sorry, the reason that MCT oil or MCT powder can be beneficial is because when you ingest it, it actually um, bypass, bypasses a lot of processes that other fats would go through. And so it can be used as energy right away um, versus if you were to have, you know, a steak that had like butter on it, it would take a little bit longer for that to digest. Whereas MCT oil becomes like quick, instant energy. Um, and it also helps to produce more ketones, which are also energy. Um, so that, th that's another supplement that is beneficial with a ketogenic lifestyle. Um, but I generally don't focus too much on the supplements. I think I, I bring the supplements in um, later on down the road, usually, or um, unless it's something like MCT powder or protein powder or something like that. So besides the MCT oil, are there any other beneficial oils that you would recommend for cooking and to use on a daily basis? So I would generally recommend um, for cooking oils, coconut oil and avocado oil um, are great. And then uh, for you know salad dressings, uh, olive oil, any type of oil that comes from a whole food source. So if you think olives, olive oil, avocado oil, avocados, coconut oil, coconut, um, and then butter and ghee and even things like uh, lard and beef, to beef towel, which are naturally occurring fats that come from animals. Um, so those are the, the main fats that I use in, in my everyday cooking. And uh, is there a certain amount of water that you should be drinking daily? I would say with water, my general recommendation for, for anybody is usually um, half their body, at least half your body weight in ounces per day. Um, I always, that's always a good starting point when people ask me how much water I should be drinking. But um, if you're working out heavily, if you're an athlete, usually you need a bit more than that. Um, and then also adding, um, this is another supplement I guess I didn't mention, but electrolytes are very, very important on a ketogenic diet as well. So making sure that you're getting enough sodium, potassium, magnesium, those types of electrolytes and minerals are very important, especially when you're uh, first starting off the diet. Um, because your body can become, as you reduce your carbohydrate intake, your body actually releases a lot of the water, and with that water goes the electrolytes. So if you don't replenish those, um, you'll hear people talk about things like the keto flu, or they got a headache, um, or they're lethargic. A lot of those, um, a lot of those symptoms can actually be fixed by just increasing your uh, high quality salt intake. Right. Yeah, I put a little bit of pink salt in my water. And that yeah. Treated as well. Yeah, exactly. Um, and one more thing. So um, if you're eating high fat at night, is there a specific time that you recommend to actually not to eat anymore or stop all fats at six o'clock? Is there a specific timeline for when we should have those fats so we can actually sleep well at night? Yeah, so I, just from experience, I've noticed that it really all comes back to it, like adherence and what, um, what the person's lifestyle is like. But I do always recommend to give yourself um, at least two hours before you go to sleep at night to finish your last meal, just because you'll, in general, that will help with your digestion and your ability to just have a good night's sleep. And you're not, you don't want to be eating right before you go to sleep because that can inhibit some digestion. Um, and then with, in terms of fat specifically, I would say, um, from my experience, mostly it doesn't, I haven't seen any difference between consuming, um, fat in the morning versus night. I usually just balance out throughout the day, um, from, from what I've, uh, used with my clients. 
And is there a specific exercise that people should do, especially on the ketogenic diet? Or how so I always, I always recommend um, no matter what diet or no matter what your protocol you're following, implementing some type of resistance training, especially for women, is very, very important in terms of maintaining muscle mass and lean body mass and just aging in general. Um, so resistant training is, is super important and that's the number one thing that I recommend, um, especially going into any type of exercise. Um, but then it also comes down to what you enjoy most. So if you're someone who doesn't like to go to the gym and maybe lift weights and you just can't see yourself doing that, then we would find something that um, you can adhere to and something that you enjoy doing because if you don't enjoy your exercise or your activity, there's, it's not going to become something that you can sustain long term. So I like to take the approach of sustainability and finding something that works um, for that individual person's overall lifestyle. Wonderful. So uh, for me, it's mostly like yoga and Pilates. So I wouldn't go really in the gym, but that should work too, right? Yes, because that's Pilates is definitely a form of resistance training as long as you're putting um, your muscles and your bones through some type of uh, resistance and um, some stuff like that, rather than, you know, going out and, and doing a bunch of cardio. Um, not that cardio is bad, but if you don't have, if you're not, you know, working your muscles and building your muscles, there can be a lot of complications down the line if you're not, if you're not careful with that. And one more question. <laughs> what be, would be one thing that the audience uh, can implement in their daily life just to feel better overall, lose weight, and have more energy? Sure. So this is something that I go into in my book is I talk about the ketogenic diet and how to implement it, but then I also talk about different lifestyle factors. So sleep, stress management, mindset, exercise, all of these different factors play into how you are going to feel on a daily basis. So if you're not sleeping enough, um, you're never going to get to your optimal, hit your optimal goals. Sleep is very important. That's something that a lot of people kind of put on the back burner. And then also just stress and your mindset and how you um, go about the day. These are all different factors that can, um, you can tweak one thing and you'll notice that a lot of the problems that you're having can go away just by tweaking something within your sleep or your mindset. Um, so those are things that I like to focus on as well. Not just, I, I believe nutrition is probably the number one important um, aspect that you need to you know, address and, and get uh, through a good protocol with that. But these other factors also play a role. So you're addressing body, mind and spirit. So that's very important. Yes, exactly. Especially now with, you know, everything that's going on, we're way too connected online, too many electronics, the body is not resting. And no matter what we're doing, if we don't get rest, then nothing really works. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Can you share a little bit with the audience uh, your gift that you're offering? Sure. So I'm offering a, um, it's a week of no recipe ketogenic meal plan. So it's basically, I, I like to take a very simplistic um, approach to implementing uh, diet or meal plans and all of that, because I found that the, the more complicated you get with all of that, the, the harder it is for adherence and to um, really stick to it. So I'm giving away a um, fully uh, prepared five-day meal plan based on different calorie levels. So um, depending if you're a female and or a male, depending on what your intake is, um, it'll be a full um, five-day meal plan for you. Thank you so much. That's so generous of you. Yes, of course. And can you tell the audience um, on how they can get a hold of you and, um, and your website and all your information? Sure. So my website is, um, my, my business name is actually Killing It Keto. Um, so it came out of a, an Instagram uh, name that I made. So it's killingitketo.com. Um, there's no G at the end of killing, just killingitketo.com. And then on all social media platforms, Killing It Keto is uh, my brand. And I have, like I mentioned, I have many online uh, 
courses uh, for nutrition and exercise. And I'm actually coming out with a keto for women specific program um, that will be launching soon as well. So if there's any women who have implemented keto in the past or tried to implement it and maybe they didn't see the results they were looking for, this is a program that takes a more strategic, uh, deeper dive into it for women specifically. So anyone that wants to get a hold of you, just go on Rachel's website, look her up on Facebook. I know you have a really big following on Instagram as well. Yes, Instagram is my main platform, yeah. yeah. And don't forget to download the free gift and have a wonderful day. Thank you. Thank you so much for being here. Thanks for having me.